I was teaching at Stanford, um, I think it was 2002, and I said I wouldn't write about Vietnam anymore. But um, I, I got up that morning because I had to do um, a presentation, a noontime presentation, and I started writing this poem called Grenade. It's a prose poem. There's no rehearsal to turn flesh into dust so quickly. A hair trigger, a cock hammer in the brain, a split second between man and infamy. It lands on the ground, a few soldiers duck, and the others are caught in a half run, and one throws himself down on the grenade. All the watches stop, a flash, smoke, silence. The sound fills the whole day, Flesh and earth fall into the eyes and mouths of the men, a dream trapped in midair. They touch their legs and arms, their groins, ears and noses, saying, what happened? Some are laughing, some are crying, some are almost dancing. Someone tries to put the dead man back together. He just dove on the damn thing, sir. A flash, smoke, silence, the day blown apart. For those who can walk away, what is their burden? Shreds of flesh and bloody rags gathered up and stuffed into a bag. Each breath belongs to him. Each song, each curse, every prayer is his. Your body doesn't belong to your mind and soul. Who are you? Do you remember the man left in the jungle? The others who owe their lives to this phantom, do they feel like you? Would his loved ones remember him if that little park or stature erected and his name didn't exist and does it enlarge their lives? Do you wish he had lied down in that closed coffin and not wander the streets or enter your bedroom at midnight? The woman you love should never understand. Who would? You remember what he used to say. If you give a kite too much strain, it'll break free. That unselfish certainty. But you can't remember when you began to live his unspoken dreams. That poem um, deals with um, um, the 14 or 15 young black Americans who threw themselves down on grenades in Vietnam. And I've been trying to make some sense out of it, and I think perhaps I come closer. Brother of the blowfly and Godhead, you work magic over battlefields and slabs of bad pork and flop houses, yes you, Go to the root of all things. You are sound and mathematical. And Jesus Christ, you're merciless with the truth. Ontological and lustrous, you cast spells on beggars and kings. Behind the stone door, a Caesar's tomb, a split trench and a field of ragweed. No decree or creed can outlaw you as you take every living thing apart, little master of earth, no one gets to heaven without going through you first. Lila, a shape shifter, lingering there on your twig of indifference. You are a glimpse of a rainbow, your eyes an iota of amber. If nature is mind, it knows you are always true, daring the human eye to see deeper. You are envy and solace. Approaching green, no more than an eye blank in a corner of the old world. You are tilt of the head and vantage point, neither this nor that. Clearly, please prehistoric and futuristic. 
and then you are gone in your little theater of opmosis. You are almost a piece of tropical work woven from the alchemist's skin habit, called into the hanging garden. You sit there almost unseen as dusty shadows clam the blooming Judas tree. She tries to hide in a swish of wet grass because she remembers the first man like a wound, an old scar, a howl in the hush. Her skin is too rough for the marketplace. Otherwise, she would have fallen under a bullet or knife. She came from an old world, a prototype the first shimmer, pieced together by a prankish god, that first moment of light seeping from the cave, an oaf ridden on her back by the edge of a flood. Before she slipped from the egg, she knew a human face could make her heart explode into a clutch of stars. She crawls to the edge on bright paws to where humans come to argue with gods as the lamp black hours fill up with the scent of animals. The horizon has a strand of barbed wire. Shadows shimmy under to look deaf in the eye, quivering like a seam of flesh unzipping earth from sky, her quietness is almost vegetable. She owns light and darkness. The unsaid lingers twofold, then threefold, her great head beckoning halfway across the abyss. She edges so close, her skin is metaphysical, her brain a hive, a hum, a lantern pulsing with eyes printed on wings. On Fridays, he had opened a can of jacks. After coming home from the mill, asked me to write a letter to my mother, who sent postcards of desert flowers taller to men. He would beg, promising never to beat her again. Somehow, I was happy she had gone, and sometimes wanted to slip in a reminder how merrily wings, polka dots and moonbeams, never make the swelling go down. His carpenter's apron always budged with old nails, a claw hammer looped at his side, and extension cords coral around his feet. Words rolled from under the pressure of my ballpoint, love, baby, honey, please. We sat under quite brutality of voltage meters and pipe threaders, lost between sentences, the gleam of a five-pound wedge on the concrete floor pull a sunset through the doorway of his tool shed. I wonder if she laughed and held him over a gas burner. My father could only sign his name, but he'd look at blueprints and say how many bricks formed each wall. This man who stole roses and hyson for his yard would stand there with eyes closed and fists ball, laboring over a simple word, almost redeemed by what he tried to say. Thank you. <laughs>